you know there was a rebellion in 1916, and in 1919 the War of Independence begins, and that goes on to 1921, and then there's the Civil War. Now, the Republicans were in control of Tipperary. I mentioned the, um, on several occasions that, that this was used, <coughs> the school here was used for British soldiers. And in 1922, it was used for Irish soldiers. So the, the boarding school, which had begun here about 1670, finished in 1922, because during the Civil War, the Republicans were in control of Tipperary. At the end of July 1922, the Free State Army swept into the town. The Free State Army had much better guns, bigger guns, far more of them. They had a bigger army. So the Republicans had no hope. Um, so they were swept out of the town towards the Glen of Ahado. On their way out of the town, of course, they burnt the military barracks, they burnt the creamery, they destroyed bridges, they destroyed water supply, they did a huge amount of damage. So the Free State troops in, uh, now occupied the town, and so they billeted themselves here, um, which didn't do the fabric of the school any good, as you can imagine. I mean, they would have caused a huge amount of damage. The last of the Erasmus Smith headmasters who was here was a man called Steed. And... Um, he was left in a, in, a, in a dreadful condition because he lived here and literally overnight he had to run for his life out of the place. Um, so all his furniture, his books, I mean, everything that he had, and his children's, three children, his children's toys, their clothes, everything left behind. And by the time the Free State Army had finished being billeted here, as you can imagine, what wasn't stolen was destroyed. Um, he afterwards had to put in for compensation, but I don't know if he got enough. Um, so his career was completely, was completely destroyed. The idea was, when, when they, they closed the school in 22, that it would, when everything died down and everything settled down, that the school would reopen. Um, but of course it never did, because after 1922, nothing was going to be the same again. Because you had a new government and a new state, and the British were no longer in control, and there was no longer the same demand for education for Protestant boys, and so a school like this, Erasmus Smith boarding school was no longer needed. Now, the key date in the subsequent history, and I'm nearly finished, we're coming up to the last bit, is 1887. And the key name, as I said, Erasmus Smith is an absolutely important name, but the second absolutely important name that has to feature somewhere on your, on your display is Father David Humphreys. Here's a trick question. What's the name of this school? No. 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 What's the name of the school? You're in it. You've been in it for several years. It's a very simple question. What's the name of the school? No. It, it, it should strike you as really weird. You're in a school, and I'm asking a very basic question. What's the name of it? And you're all getting the answer wrong. The name of this school is the Father David Humphreys Memorial School. And if you look at the main entrance, it's actually written on a plaque as you come into the school. That's technically the name of this school. Now, nobody used it. Back in the 18th century, in the 19th century, it was the Abbey. Everybody is ever. Okay, so the Abbey is the name. But technically, this is the Father David Humphreys Memorial School. So whoever this Father David Humph Humphreys was, he must have done something very, pretty significant to have the school named after him. And that's the last thing I, I want to talk about for a few minutes. David Humphreys was from um, Maru in County Limerick. And he was stationed as a priest here from 1885 to 1895. He afterwards went as a parish priest to Killinall, and he died there in 1930. So that's his kind of career. But he was, he, was, he was really weird. He was a weird individual. And it's only weird individuals kind of get stuff done. He was one of these people, he kind of gets his teeth into something, he would absolutely stick at it. And in 1887, which is this key... Um, a committee arrived in Tipperary to investigate this and other schools like it. Schools that had been set up as charities. Um, you know, just to see how they were functioning and how their money was being managed and that everything was being done as it should be done. And because the, one of the schools was here, they said they would have one of their meetings here. And that's the thing that brought this school to Humphrey's attention. And what he decided then was there's something weird going on because this was a school set up as a charity for the education of the tenants of people on Erasmus Smith land, and yet none of those tenants were benefiting from the charity. Now, it so happened that most of those tenants were now Catholic, and so their sons were Catholic. So, the charity was now functioning as an entirely Protestant charity. 
whereas the people who could benefit and should benefit were Catholic. So he said there's something wrong. So he spent the next 20 or 30 years fighting for Catholics to have access to the charity and to the money involved in the charity. And of course he got nowhere. He wrote books, he studied, he agitated, he tried to bring court cases, but he got nowhere because largely he was doing this on his own. And basically he was going against, if you understand the expression, the establishment. He was going against the force of the state and the force of the Church of Ireland. So basically, you understand the expression David and Goliath. In other words, he was very small, taking on something very large. Um, but he, he got the ball rolling, but he failed. And as I say, by the time he died, he had still failed. But once the new state came into being and the British pulled out, and this was no longer functioning as, as, as a school, and the people who were running the charity in the 1920s said, well, we're now living in a new state, the British are no longer here, so maybe we'd be better have a look at how our charity is set up. And so that got the ball rolling again. A local committee was established here and in the other places like Galway and Drada to say, right, if this thing is being looked into, and remember there's a huge amount of money at stake, um, maybe we can get a share of it. Because I'm talking about a time when you didn't have free second level education. So that's something to bear in mind. You did have the Christian Brothers here, but you paid. There wasn't free second level education. So you can see the attraction of the idea, if there's money out there, so we could get free second level education for our sons, well, we want a share of it. And so this agitation began. It's a complicated, long story. Um, Humphreys is important because he got, got, the, got the story started. He wasn't there at the finish. It finished in 1938. Um, and, and finally an agreement was come to that they would divide the money that was in the charity. And that um, half the money would be given to the Abbey and the other half would be given for Protestant education. Now, the money we're talking about, apart from the, the school building here, the money in today's terms is about 5 million euros. So we're talking about a hell of a lot of money. Now, you're not going to get access to the 5 million, but what you'll have access to is the interest the 5 million will earn, which is still a lot of money. And that was the deal that was finally done. So one of the, apart from all the other things that's unique about this school, there isn't another school in the country that's been set up by an act of the, uh, an act of the Oireachtas. The Oireachtas is the Irish Parliament. No other school in the country. Well, that's not how schools are set up. But this school was set up by an act of the Oireachtas. So once they decided, right, we're going to split the charity in half, half Catholic, half Protestant. The Catholic half is going to be the Abbey School. So what kind of school is it going to be and who's going to run it? Uh, a lot of argument about that. The big advantage the Christian Brothers had is that they were already here. They'd come here in the 1860s, and they had a school up in the hills that was falling down. So they were already in place, and a lot of people were, were very enthused about them. So the Christian Brothers were given charge of this school. But then it was decided, because of the special circumstances, that the school would have a special emphasis. And the special emphasis of the school was going to be agricultural education. So the significance of 19, yes, 40, the leaving certificate in 1944 is particularly interesting. That's not the year I did my leaving cert, in case you're wondering. 1944, the leaving cert. A new subject was examined for the first time. What was that subject? Agricultural, Agricultural science. How many schools had candidates sitting that agricultural science exam in 1944? I mean, that's still a subject, isn't it? You still do agricultural science? Yeah. Is it still a leading subject? Well, in 1944 was the first year. How many schools had students sitting it? One. One. What school? Right. This school. So that's another weird thing about the Abbey. It's the only school in the country for whom a, 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 a leading cert subject was specially created. Do you understand? Leading cert. <coughs> Agricultural science and the leading search topic was created for the Abbey. Now, obviously, since then, anybody and everybody can and does do it. But that's the significance. The first year, 1944, only the Abbey. Um, but before that, 
as I say, this was given over to the Christian Brothers. They moved in here in 1940 into the old Erasmus Smith School, and you can still see photographs of it. However, in 1941, so they were hardly moved in here, and a fire broke out and the place was destroyed. So that was the ending of the third school building that was here. Um, and so then the, 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 the present school building was, was opened in the mid-1950s. And so that's the fourth with its various additions. And not finally, because you know that's not going to last forever, but it's, 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 it's the current school, so it's, it's number four. The last thing, as I said, I've been mentioning names. There's one other name which deserves to be mentioned in, 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 in the story of, of, of this place. Um, five million euro, as I said, is the amount of money that was attached, um, to which this school and no other school in the country would have access. And that was arranged in 1938. Uh, then, in the 19, about 1960, late 1960s, free education was introduced to secondary schools. And uh, before that, as I said, it wasn't free. And that kind of changed the need for that kind of money. And so, as the years passed, people, I mean, as, as, as unbelievable as this sounds, but people kind of forgot about the money being there. People in the Department of Education, the Department of Finance, forgot about it. And the people who were running here, which of course at that time were Christian Brothers, they forgot about it. Now the reason, of course, the Christian Brothers forgot about it is very specific. When the Christian Brothers came here, um, the Christian Brothers were very Catholic and very nationalist. I'm sure that doesn't come as a surprise to you, does it? Very nationalist, very green in their politics. The, the Christian Brothers didn't want to know anything about the past history of this place and about the Erasmus Smith and about all of that. I went to school here in the 1960s and I heard nothing and nobody said anything about Erasmus Smith. As far as I was concerned, this was just another Christian Brothers school, no different from any other. And that's how the Christian Brothers wanted it. And that's understandable because history very much, how you view history, depends from where you're viewing it. And where they were viewing it from was very much kind of in the early years of the state, when they didn't much care for Britain and everything having to do with Britain. And so anything that had to do with Erasmus Smith and with Protestant and with all, they didn't want to know. And so it was forgotten. And so this money was kind of forgotten. And then maybe 10, 15 years ago, um, a woman on the board of management of the school. Now, you know Gleason's, the sand and gravel? You know, you see their trucks everywhere. It's really fun. Um, Mrs. Maureen Gleeson, St. Gleeson, was on the board of management in the school and she found out about th th this money and asked the, the very sensible question, where is it and what's become of it? And she started a whole campaign, very difficult, because nobody in the Department of Education or the Department of Finance knew anything about it and didn't want to know anything about it because, you know, best to just leave well enough alone. But anyway, she kept agitating, kept agitating, and eventually the whole thing was kind of revived. And so for the last number of years, the school continues to benefit from the Erasmus Smith money. And then when the last, when, when I don't know if any of you were here when John Heffern was principal, perhaps not, you were gone, but he, he kind of had an interest in this history, and around 2000, he re-established connections with the high school in Rathgar, which is the other Erasmus Smith School, but it's the Protestant one in Dublin. And so people from the school came down, and the president, Mary McAleese, was here. And in some of your yards, there's a, a plaque, again, you've probably paid no heed to it, to commemorate that, that event when the connection was re-established. And when a few years, when two years ago maybe, there was a ceremony for the First World War commemoration, there were people down from the high school. Because that's the link. The high school in Rathgar, um, and this school here are linked because they're both Erasmus Smith schools in terms of their, of their history. And so that connection has been re-established. Um, the financial details I mentioned, I don't know how much the school gets, but I know it's getting money now thanks to uh, Mrs. Gleeson from the Erasmus Smith money. And as I said, I mean, some of it may well have gone into, the, um, into your new sports hall, I don't know. Um, just to, to, as I say, we're going from 1300, I mean, the thing to remember is and the Abbey was founded around 1300, and this is 2018, and we're still in the Abbey. That's 718 years of history. 
So good luck to you if you can encompass that in one picture. Um, I shall very much look forward to, um, to seeing it. That, that I think I'm going to stop. Now, boys, round the floor.